Okay. <clears throat> All right, what's up, everybody? Good morning. Welcome to a Sunday edition of Morning Scone presented by Brock, the Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic, Hutco Roofing, HutcoRoofing.com. Restored Motions, RestoredMotions.com, and ProCharge EV, ProChargeEV.com. Glad you're with us here. Happy Sunday, everybody. Let's see, the uh, Tigers drop game three at Georgia. Um, Tigers drop game three at Georgia. Um, Obviously disappointing, but overall, um, you know, what a, a really, really uh, pretty incredible regular season, which is something I think, you know, got to make sure that we keep in mind. Um, LSU finishes the regular season 42 and 13, 19 and 10 in the conference, so... Uh, as the three seed in the SEC tournament, that's the highest uh, finish in the regular season for LSU since 2017, when they were the number one seed. Um, the 42 regular season wins is the most since the 2015 team, which won 46 games in the regular season. People forget how awesome that team was, unfortunately. It's going to show you again what you do in Omaha is what matters. Um, so, Tigers put together their, their best regular season, certainly since 2017, um, when they were the, the one seed in the SC tournament, 2015, when they won 46 games. So, all things considered, uh, grand expectations for this team, obviously, but... Um, they, they did some pretty incredible things. And locking up the three seed uh, at the SEC tournament, uh, 19 wins uh, in, the regular se in the regular season in SEC play. Um, we look at the updated college baseball RPI, because a lot of people are going to ask about national seeds and look at the, um, you know, at the, at the bracket. Uh, LSU is, is, the, is the fourth best RPI in the country. Only Wake Forest, Kentucky, and Arkansas have a better RPI. Um, LSU is spot ahead of Florida, South Carolina, Clemson, Vanderbilt. So um, that should absolutely lock up a national seat for LSU, regardless of what happens in Hoover. Um, you did what you needed to do. So 42 wins, um, you know, for example... Arkansas has 39 wins, South Carolina 38, Bandy 37. So you got more over, overall wins. You got 19 conference win uh, wins. And RPI, actually D1 baseball is LSU's RPI 3. Um, so, you know, um, LSU, actually, hang on. No, their RPI is four, excuse me. They're so quad one wins, 17 quad one wins, 17 and 11 against quad one. So um, they, it's hard to imagine them not being a national seed. The, the conference tournament just isn't weighted uh, enough to where if they went 0-2 in Hoover, they would drop out of a national seed. So yeah, I think they've locked up a national seed, which is what you wanted. So that way you guarantee your road to Omaha goes through the box. So, All right, we'll say some good mornings here. We talk about the game itself. Good start by Javen Coleman. I know the stat line isn't really going to reflect it. I think he was three innings, four runs, four hits. But um, let me see. I'll look at it right here. Yeah, uh, three runs, four runs, uh, four hits, two strikeouts, two walks. Um, I know that's, that's not going to look great. But, uh, you know, he gave up in that second inning a, a bleeder, a bloop. There was an error. And one of the things that we do talk about with this team a good bit is, um, you know, you uh, 
when when you aren't dominant on the mound, you need your your defense to really play well to pick up your your pitching. And LSU in the second half of this year just hasn't done that. Um, you know, White had a uh, I guess they charged White with the throwing error, but quite honestly. It, I get why you're going to charge White with a throwing error, but it's a play where if you're below so at first base, you need to pick it, man. You need to pick it or at least get your body in front of it, not allow a run to score. So, um, so would have liked to have seen. Let's see, yeah, they gave White an error and they gave Thompson an error on throwing error as well. So, um, but you know, Thompson's throwing error is another one where he's. You know, we talk about Thompson all the time, but if you if you're watching the game and you saw the play, so he's ranging to his left. He makes, he gets to the ball behind second base. He's behind second base. And he gets to the ball, which most shortstops would never even get to that ball, but he gets to the ball and he's still, his momentum's carrying him at, like into center field and he tries to make an off balance throw toward first and he throws it wild. So, um, you know, maybe better just eating it but, you know, anyway, um, Trey Morgan got you a homer to start the game in the first, put you up 2 nothing. you're feeling pretty good. But, again, you had some, some at-bats where, you know, you had situations to score runs, just didn't come through. Um, you know, you left 12 on base. They left 10 on base, so they had opportunities as well. But they out-hit you 12-7, to seven. just didn't come up with the big hits, so... Uh, Dylan Cruz struck out three times, which is so wild. He hadn't struck out three times all season and then does it twice in this series. Um, you know, the, the second strikeout when they caught him looking, he struck out to open the game swinging, but the second strikeout when they caught him looking, the ball was off the plate. And Dylan's got such a good eye, such a patient hitter, that, you know, if he's looking at that pitch, it's a ball. They, they brought him up. And so the next AB, he swung at a ball outside of the zone because they called him out of that pitch, uh, the AB before. So you really love some more consistency behind the plate, but that's what it is. So anyway, let's say good morning and see what y'all got. Appreciate y'all for being here as always. Kelly Gross, Bob Poole, Samuel Merrifield, good morning. Um, did you see D1 projected regional for LSU? They have... Nichols, Oklahoma, Southern Miss, that would be tough. Um, I think the thing you got to keep in mind is, so Tanner Hall is still at Southern Miss. I don't know a lot about Oklahoma this year. Uh, Tanner Hall is still at Southern Miss. But uh, any two seed is going to be a good team. It's generally going to be a power conference. Generally going to be a power conference team that um, um, you know, that, that just missed hosting. So... Um, you know, the, the key is understanding that whoever that two seed is, they're probably going to have to throw their ace in game one to win the game against the three seed. Um, and then they're going to lose to Paul Skeens. So I don't worry so much about, about the regional, the super regional pairing is the thing that would be of significance. Jamie Lede, Dale Broussard. SEC could have half the teams in Omaha. That's, I mean, it's happened before. Uh, Breezy Bro, actually last year, we had A&M, you had Auburn. Tennessee felt, came up short, right? But, um, Michael Castillo, good morning. Uh, Nick Newbill, Damon Gilmore, <laughs> Larry Garter, Trivia Carter, Shane O'Mac, Bill Galleon, good morning. Jay Reach. Um, Jay Reach said Heard start Wednesday. Um, let's see, Jay, I, let's see, I haven't given much thought yet to what they might do at the SEC tournament. Um, it, so you're off Tuesday, of course, and for those that don't know, the team is going straight from Athens to Hoover. So they're not coming back to Baton Rouge and then, and then turning around and going back. Cause I guess in theory, if you would, if you were coming back to Baton Rouge, you would have got home yesterday, Saturday evening, night. Uh, you could have come home, you know, stayed here Sunday, Monday, left Tuesday, and then played on Wednesday. But generally, 
you want to be there so before the games start on Tuesday so you can practice at the field. So you want to practice the field on Monday before the games start on Tuesday. So um, I know they'll also practice at Hoover High and stuff like that, but um, you want to at least be able to go practice at the field once before you play. So um, so LSU's going straight there, uh, and they'll they'll be there until uh, you know, till they – they're done in Hoover, which hopefully it's they play through next Sunday and, and win the thing. But um, you know, if uh, the 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 most likely scenario, obviously, is you're going to keep uh, Skeens on his regular rest, so you'll throw Skeens on Thursday. You'll you'll be off Tuesday. You'll play a game Wednesday, and then play again on Thursday. So um, Drew's playing with rain tones. I don't know if y'all can hear that. Um, So, um, yeah, they could treat Wednesday like a midweek. You're certainly not going to bring back Ty Floyd or Javen Coleman on short rest. So you could start Hurd. Um, you could start Money or Dutton, which I think both either would be a good option as well. Where you just you treat it like a uh, you treat it like a midweek. So, you know, last week in the midweek they started Blake Money, and that that could be your your best bet is to start money in game one, if uh, if that's kind of the approach they're taking, if they want to keep Hurd in that closer role. Um, Spurge, good morning. Jesse Brown, good morning. Zelshu, current record, make him national seed. Yeah, I think so, Jesse. Merrick Mathurin, good morning from Palm Springs. Okay. Taylor Castanier, good morning. Who had a more dominant, impressive final regular season, Paul Skeens or Joe Burrow? Um, I mean, Taylor, comparing across sports is just impossible. First of all, Burrow, we, we, Skeens' season isn't finished. Plus, Skeens doesn't play every day. Burrow played in every game, right? So, um, Burrow had the greatest season ever so, in college football. So, Burrow is going to be the answer, prop, most likely. Just sits there and listens to my dude. Just sits there and listens to ringtones. I gotta turn the volume down now. The crazy thing is I couldn't even find where to turn the volume down on those things. He's about to start playing them again. All right. Uh, Samu Smith, who throws game one versus South on our swag squad? Coleman. Uh, yeah, I think you pitch. You probably pitch back, which it would depend a little bit on rest, but you could also treat it like a midweek, Samuel. I mean, you could you could throw, you know, it's, it, it's not the landline ringing, no. Um, yeah, no, you could, you know, when, so he's asking about, you know, what you do when you get to regionals. You know, I'm a firm believer that you do not throw, you obviously aren't going to throw Skeens in a 1-4 matchup. Um, you are going to throw whoever you think can throw the ball over the plate and get you a good start. I think that at this point, I, I don't think that I would throw Hurd because you want Hurd in the closer role, if that's what you want. So, you know, Coleman could be the guy, depending on how you use him in the SEC tournament. See, the tricky part is if Coleman pitches, let's say, 
Friday in the SEC tournament, if you advance that far, um, I guess you could turn around and throw them on Friday if you play a Friday, Saturday, Sunday regional. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it could be Coleman. I wouldn't be opposed to that. Let Coleman go game one, and then you'd have Skeens in the marble game of the regional and Floyd to close it out. Uh, Raymond Mortimat, does the number three overall seed seem about right for LSU? Wake is the number one overall. Yeah, I think Wake will probably have locked up number one overall. Um, Arkansas, probably the two. I think LSU's in the three or four range. Uh, Cliff Nelson, good morning. TC, so Skeens, game one in Hoover. No, you're not going to pitch Skeens on short rest. So, you Skeens through Thursday, you're not going to throw him on Wednesday. Um, you'll get through Wednesday, whatever you have to do, and then throw Skeens on Thursday. You want Skeens on regular rest. I, I can't I can't see them disrupting his routine and let him letting him throw on Wednesday. That um, Now, the only benefit of that is it would give him another day of rest before regionals, but I, I, can't, I can't see them doing that. You want to keep him on regular rest. Uh, TD, uh, oh, T-Dog 26, got it. Let's see. Uh, oh, Jesus Christ, so stupid. Back to the Trey Morgan questions. So stupid. Uh, Jay Reach, I'm feeling a four seed. Uh, makes sense. You see, and the, the thing that the guy talking about Morgan ignores is the fact that those are routine plays that any first baseman in college should make, number one. And you're also ignoring what having an extra bat in the lineup does for you. And like having Travinsky and left gets you both Beloso and, or Morgan and left gets you Travinsky, Beloso, and yesterday, um, Joe Bear, DH. But it gets you the extra bat in the lineup as well. And those are routine plays that any shortstop in college should make. That's, that's what you're ignoring. You don't have to be magnificent at first base to make that play. You just have to make a routine play. But again, you continue to ignore the fact, the thing that I've told you for three years, that you're seeing manifest and you still can't get over the fact that you're wrong. Adam Fontenot, is just me, or does it seem negligent that Strickland has one left-handed bat in the lineup in that ballpark? I mean, it's not going to be his problem soon because he's going to get fired. Uh, Tim Gotro, Go Tigers, Trivia Carter, good morning. Am I missing something about Little? Um, you know, so for those that missed it, if you weren't watching the game, Christian Little went in yesterday um, after Dutton. So he went in in the sixth, and he went two-thirds of an inning. He walked three. One of them was an intentional walk, but he gave up a hit, walked a guy. They intentionally loaded the bases, which I can't imagine why they intentionally loaded the bases with Christian Little on now. And then he walked in a run. Uh, then they went to Blake Money, who got a pop out to end the inning. Um, you know, I, I, I don't... Um, I don't like to criticize college athletes. Uh, in spite of NIL, when people say they're still amateurs and we forget sometimes they're still just young people. Um, they're not pros. Most of these guys aren't going to play professional baseball. Um, and so, like, Christian Little's not trying to throw, to walk guys. He's not trying to be wild. Um, and I understand that. Um, I also understand that his command is non-existent right now. And it's, it's really tough to justify putting him on, giving him the ball in any kind of a leverage situation right now. Um, you know, he, um, he's got great arm talent. And if anybody can ever hone it and refine him, he could be a really good pitcher. You know, but you're looking at a guy who in 33 innings pitched has 27 walks. And that's almost a walk per innings pitched. And his whip is 167. For those that don't know what a whip is, whip is walks and hits per innings pitched. 
So he's allowing, for example, Skeens' his whip is 0.75. Um, you know, the thing that tantalizes you about little, though, is the 41 strikeouts, right? 41 strikeouts and 33 innings pitched is, is amazing because he's got really good stuff. He's got really good arm talent. He just can't command it. So, um, so I mean, trivia said, am I missing something about little? I mean, no, I mean, it's what you know, what you don't acknowledge, which is he's great arm talent. Um, but I'm, I'm with you in the sense of, I don't know how you continue to give him the ball in leverage situations because he just hasn't proven to you he can throw strikes. And if you can't throw strikes, you can't pitch. So, um, Lou, in a world where Edward Shores, Taylor stay healthy, what's LSU's record this season? Well, I think it's safe to assume that you probably don't blow the two games against Mississippi State. I'm just looking at end game scenarios, right? Then you also blew a lead against against uh, A&M in game three. If you remember, you had the lead, you blew it bottom eighth, and then they they um, they got three outs in the ninth to end it. So um, I'd probably say those three games. So LSU finished 19 and 10. So 22 league wins, 22 and seven. I think is is fair, but who knows? Uh, Joey Metke, good morning, Dave. Into a reality check: the ball is never outside the zone when Klein is behind the plate. Um, Jesse Brown, if this is Camara's last year, Nola, do you think he has a productive career outside of New Orleans? Um, I don't know, Jesse. I don't think Alvin's done, but um, I I do think um, he would have to go to the right situation where he wouldn't be a total workhorse. Jamie Lede, Dale Broussard, Breezy Bro, Ty Fly. Good morning. Um, Let's see. Brant Roban. I know it's been an incredible season so far. LSU did have several advantages. Didn't quite get it done when given prime opportunities past few weeks. Vandy teed it up for us. Oh, well, let's finish strong with the Tigers. Lance Richard. Hopefully Cruz can bust out of his slump in the tourney. Let's see. Mark, Good morning. ULL or USM coming to the Baton Rouge Regional. It's a good guess. I mean, just history usually shows regionally you're going to see a team like that come here. <laughs> Lance Reshot. <laughs> Lance Reshot. I thought it was Erox landline blowing up. Everybody's got the landline jokes. Erox sleeping. She fell asleep on the couch last night and slept on the couch all night. Um, we were watching. So we had a pool day yesterday. Um, we had some friends come over. And so we, we just, we spent the whole day outside by the pool. So we're all pretty, you know, just sort of, um, sun spent after the day. And so, uh, showered, got drew to bed and we put on air, you know, the, the Nike Michael Jordan shoe movie. Um, and she fell asleep on the couch. I watched the movie finished right before, right before midnight. And, um, and so I went to bed and I, I ran her bath water and I went to bed and I was like, Hey, are you, so Drew has to get medicine every night in the middle of the night at one 30. So one of us sets an alarm and gets up or she, sometimes she'll just stay up to one 30 and give his meds. So he's got a feeding tube, right? So he keeps an extension connected so we can give him meds in, in the middle of the night, whatever. Um, and so, uh, So she's like, yeah, I'll just, I'll get in the bath and I can do his meds at 1.30. So I go to bed. Well, normally if Drew doesn't get his 1.30 dose, he wakes up in the middle of the night. Like he'll wake up at 6 a.m. or something like that, be ready to roll. Well, I hear him talking in his bed at 8 o'clock. And I'm like, oh, man, I thought he'd sleep later today. And I look over and her side of the bed is still made. I'm like, oh, God. I walk in here. She never got off the couch. Like her bath water was 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 in there. She never got off the couch, so 
So she passed out and just slept all night on the couch. Drew never got his medicine. So he's, uh, he's ripping and roaring, uh, this morning. So hang on one second. Here's the backpacks, people. Let me go take that off. I'll be right back. Right back. All right. All right. Let's see. Patrick Kaysan, good morning. Carl Ritter, good morning. Rachel Goff, good morning. Is Morgan coming back next year? Absolutely not. Like 0% chance. There's, yeah, so just as a reminder, because I know we get close to the draft, and the draft is always different than, um, in baseball than any other sports. So in the major league draft, you can get picked and then choose to return to school. Um, like you don't have to sign with, with that team. Um, but if you decide to return to school, you lose all of your leverage. Uh, and teams can choose to sign you for less than slot value. Um, if you go back to school for a senior year, because then you have no leverage against them. You have to take whatever they offer. So I talked to, uh, the best example of this is I talked to Kramer about this. And he, and he told me on the record, um, the numbers, but he went in, so in the fourth round, so in 2016, after the 2016 season, Cleveland took him in the 32nd round. Okay, he went round 32 after his junior season. Comes back to school for a senior year in 2017. Has a great year. Good in the fourth round to St. Louis. He got less money from St. Louis going in the fourth round than what Cleveland had offered him when he was taken in the 32nd round the year before. Because you lose all your leverage. So... Jordan Thompson is gone. Trey Morgan is gone. Ty Floyd is gone. All of the juniors are gone. Um, so, you know. So, yeah, so Trey Morgan's gone. Um, Carl Ritter, not worried about seating, worried about our errors in the bullpen. Uh, Dale Broussard, GMBX lockup period ending very soon, correct? So it's staggered based on the wallet holders from 18 months to two years out. Uh, but Dale, I wouldn't worry about anything because nobody's selling right now. Uh, Bart St. Germain, good morning. Uh, let's see, where Christian Little does his best is starting a game and only going two to three innings. He struggles as soon as someone gets on base. Um... I mean, Bart, we saw him pitch okay. I mean, he pitched well against, I think it was Kentucky, day three against Kentucky. Uh, he, it was nine up, nine down, but I don't know that he's pitched. I don't know that he started other than that game. Let me see. I mean, he was, he's been a bullpen guy. So, you know, then you could say he pitched well out of the windup, but then he came in in the sixth yesterday and started the inning out of the windup and gave up a walk and a hit, and then they walked in. You know, I mean, so it does exactly hold water, but and I think I think his only start of the year was Kentucky. Let me see. He might have started in midweek somewhere along the way. Um, he did start against Lamar. Let's see. He started eight games this year. Let's see. So he started against Lamar, 
Grambling, Nichols, Tulane, so a bunch of midweek starts. And then they moved him into the number three role after he started against Kentucky and pitched really well. And they started Kentucky, Ole Miss, Bama, Auburn, the game, the game threes against those, and just obviously didn't go well. So the last two weeks, they moved him out of the rotation, put uh, Coleman in there. So not exactly, man. I mean, the Auburn game, he started, he didn't record an out. Um Ole Miss was his best outing, when he went five and a third. Kentucky was good for three innings on the fourth. He he walked the base loaded. Um, so, yeah, man, I mean, I don't really – there's – yeah, I don't, I don't think so, Bart. I mean, you got a five-game SEC sample size – Four SEC starts that kind of disagrees with that. I don't know, man. I, mean, I can't even look at the midweeks. Gramble, Grambling, he went two innings. Nichols, he went inning and two thirds, pulled him. Two lane, one inning. Walk three. Walk two, struck out three. Yeah, that's, I mean, Bart, there's really not, there's really no evidence to support that, man. I mean, I understand what you're saying, but again, like, it's the same, if you're saying he pitches better out of the windup, the same is true that when, when he starts an inning, instead of coming out of the bullpen with a clean, that was yesterday, I mean, he started the six and they walked three guys. So, um, Patrick Case on high expectations can prevent people from enjoying an outstanding season of LSU baseball. There's some of that, for sure. There's definitely some of that. David Ezernak, uh, get Cruz to the ball to right field more. Um, so, David, uh, please stop. Please don't do not do that. I'm going to ask you nicely. Like, Dylan Cruz is going to be the first pick in the draft. He's got power at all fields. He's a five-tool guy. Every baseball player in the history, in the history of mankind has had a slump at some point in a season. Dylan Cruz knows how to hit to all fields. He's... An exceptional talent. He doesn't need you to tell him to hit the ball to right field more. That's. It's actually. It, before I keep talking and say something that might be offensive to you, I'm just going to say, please, please don't, don't do that. That's a. That, that's not a very wise comment. Like. Dylan Cruz doesn't need criticism. He's. He's the best player in the game. Like, he knows how to hit the ball to right field. Um, let's see. Bard says hitters need to get, hitters that get the shift need to, okay. Yeah, I, I'm with you. Sure. Go the opposite way. But some guys are dead pull hitters and you're in there to be a dead pull hitter and hit with power. Like Cade Beloso, who they shift against him every time. He's a dead pull hitter. And yesterday he homered. And Braden Jobert, who's a dead pull hitter. And... You know what? You had a short porch and right, and you had Braden Joeberry in there to try to elevate a ball to right field and get it. Like that's why they're in the game. So, it, in some respects, I do agree with you. I hate the shift, and if you want to get teams to stop shifting against you, like drag one down the third baseline and take your base. I'm with you, but that's also not why those guys are in the game. So, I don't know that we're going to change that. Uh, Dale Broussard, any of the pitchers we are currently using make the roster next season or complete overhaul? I'm sorry? Dale, I don't know exactly what you're asking me, man. Um, what, what are you talking about? I mean, all of your pitchers that don't sign are going to be back. Uh, and then you're going to get some guys healthy that didn't pitch this year. I mean, I mean Cooper's even got another season. Griffin Herring has been great this year. You know, Javen Coleman's draft eligible. It's a redshirt sophomore, so we'll see what he does. Um, 
I mean, even I know as much as we're talking right now about Christian Little, like Christian Little is a junior, he's going to sign. I mean, he's still going to get drafted. He throws, he throws mid nineties and has three pitches, and someone's going to say, "I'll take that arm talent and teach him how to pitch." I mean, Floyd's going to sign. Dutton's back. Collins has another year if he wants to come back. You know, Hurd's a sophomore. He's got another year. Um, Shores is back, coming off an injury. I think Blake Money's going to sign. Um, unfortunate thing is that Garrett Edwards is going to sign, too. And he's coming off of Tommy John, but, you know. he's. But, again, like, it doesn't do him any good to come back because he... You know, at best, with an 18-month injury, you know, he comes back in May, June of next year. I don't, I mean, I, I actually don't know that, I don't know that he'd be available at any point next year. So he probably signs. Um, yeah, so I, Grant Taylor's back off the injury next year. So I, man. Uh, Gregory Gordy, good morning. Armstrong grappling. Bet Ackenhausen starts Wednesday. Like, are y'all just, just throwing stuff against the wall? Uh, Ackenhausen hadn't started a game all year, if I'm not mistaken. Let me go check. But, like, guys, at, at this point in the season, like, you kind of know what what you are, you know, and who's developed into, into what roles. Um... Like, they like Ackenhausen as their first lefty out of the bullpen. I, I don't think he's started all year. Yeah, Ackenhausen hasn't started a game all year. Like, <sighs> no, so I, I don't think Ackenhausen is going to start on Wednesday. Um, <laughs> Brennan Huff, Trey Morgan not playing first base is costing this team. All right, I'll say this again. I don't know why I have to keep saying this, but some of you are just that dense. Okay, Brennan. Any human being playing college baseball should be able to play first base and catch the ball. Your suggestion, by the way, is to ignore the fact that Trey Morgan himself actually does commit errors when playing first base. Would you like me to go back and look up last year's statistics or... Statistics from the last two seasons with Trey Morgan playing first base because Trey Morgan's committed errors also. The point is, Trey Morgan playing left field has given you a really good athletic left fielder because he has saved you runs in left field by playing a very good left field. It's also allowed you to get another dominant bat in the lineup, which is what this team is centered around. It's like, I mean, I know I say this often and I'm, it, I know it's going to come across like disparaging, but some of you just don't watch baseball. Like, it, what, what you're suggesting is like saying, man, LSU should have taken Kayshawn Booty and put him at cornerback. That's really costing the team, not having Kayshawn Booty at cornerback. Look how fast he is and athletic. Like, he's a receiver. He's going to play receiver. Like, it just doesn't make sense what you're saying. Like, you don't acknowledge there are guys on the team that were recruited to be defensive backs. Let them play defensive back and do the do the thing you do really well. Whew, man. Some of y'all, dude, I swear. Like, it's mind-boggling, some of you. By the way, Trey Morgan, this season, playing in the outfield, has the fewest errors of his career. Uh, some person, why do you have Bud Light on AFR? Official beer of AFR. Happy to have done that deal a few weeks ago with Mockler Beverage, locally owned company, great company. And so Bud Light, official beer of AFR. Gregory Gordy, any suggestion for a first time or going to Hoover or places to see, favorite places to eat? There ain't a lot in Hoover, Gregory. Um, there's, um, you know, I mean, I go there for SEC media days every year, but we usually just stayed around the um, the the Hyatt. Uh, 
you know, that it's attached to that mall. So you can go shop in that mall. There's a bunch of different like restaurants uh, right around there. There's a there's a, a sports bar. What's it called? Taps. Um, yeah, what's it called? Uh, what's it called? On tap. That's it. On tap, not taps, on tap. On tap, school sports bar. Um, a lot of beers and TVs and everything. So, but if I were to go, I would just go to Birmingham. There's way more to do, like actually in the city if you want to go to Birmingham. All right, smash so that like button if you would. 157 watching live. We appreciate that on YouTube. Subscribe up to the channel. Facebook, please like the page, share the post. Uh, go Tigers. Matt, what record do you think would be considered a disappointing season for LSU this year? For me, I think nine and three or worse would be disappointing. Uh, yeah. I think considering their championship expectations, if they go nine and three, I think we'll, there will be a loss somewhere along the way that we'd be disappointed about. So like, I mean, I think we could all see them losing in Tuscaloosa. That's a tough game. They could win. I'm not saying they will lose. I'm just saying like, you could understand if they lose that game. I mean, you got a tough opener with Florida State. You're favored in every other game. Um, so, barring injury or something unforeseen, yeah, I mean, it feels like 9-3 and three would be disappointing. If you end up going 8-4, and four, that would be really disappointing. Um, Dave Endure, you're saying if you need strikes, Little's out of the question, yeah. Shane Danos, good morning. Can my wife Jamie catch a shout out? Sure. What's up, Jamie Danos? Appreciate you for watching. Have an awesome day. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday. And for uh, being married to a guy in Shane who watches Morning Scone, you obviously have great taste. So cheers to you, Jamie. Hope it's a great day. Jason H., good morning. Eric Wilder out of Morning Matt. Nothing against the guy at this point. Okay, that's a Christian little question. I talked about that a little bit ago. Uh, let's see, intentionally walking the bases loaded with a pitcher was bad control is questionable. I agree with that. Now, in saying the pitch calling didn't help going breaking ball, oh, oh change up one oh. See, Brennan, here's the thing with that though. Like, when do you see Christian Little throw his fastball for a strike? Like, that's that, like, I'm okay calling the pitch the pitcher is most comfortable throwing over the plate. And normally you would think that's a fastball, but with Christian Little, he overthrows his fastball and it ends up in the left-handed batter's box. He overthrows against a right-handed hitter and it tails away and ends up in the left-handed batter's box. Like, I'm not looking at the pitch chart breakdown, but you better believe that Jay and Wes Johnson have that and they know what pitch he most comfortably throws for a strike. And it's not his fastball, oddly. Randall Offrecht. Morning, Matt. I always like Cruz leading off because he gets on base. What's your thoughts on South Carolina finding their baseball coach? Um, I'm sorry. Sorry, first of all, um, I hate Dylan Cruz leading off. Can he lead off? Yes, I hate it. Um, uh, I think you leave well enough alone with Gavin Dugas uh, because Gavin Dugas has the second highest on base percentage behind only Dylan Cruz. And so Cru Dugas gets on base. Morgan sees a ton of fastballs, put him in the two hole. And then you have Cruz, White, 3 4 in RBI opportunities, which I love. Um, I don't know why after 50 some odd games, they decided to start tinkering. I mean, I do know they're trying to get Cruz going because he's in a bit of a slump right now, but I don't think you start shuffling the lineup. That's, you know, a few years back, remember when Maneri moved Bregman down to the eight hole, which was like, come on, man. But anyway, um, I understand sometimes coaches do that, take pressure off, get guys going. I don't think Dylan Cruz needs that. I think he just needs to keep swinging and get through it. But um, I'm sorry, are you saying South Carolina fired Mark Kingston? Because I don't see that anywhere, and that doesn't make any sense because they're probably about to be it. I mean, I know they slumped late, but a lot of that had to do with injuries. And why would they fire Mark Kingston the week heading into the SEC tournament? Um, 
Yeah, I don't. Where where, where are you seeing? Or are you asking if they will fire Mark? Like they haven't fired him. What are your thoughts on South Carolina firing their baseball coach? Yeah, I. They haven't fired Mark Kingston. At least not that I see anywhere. Unless you're breaking news to me right here. Nick Hessler, Matt, why would he pitch hit bear for Josh Pearson in a clutch situation? Who was the hottest in the series? Head scratching. Yeah, because he was trying to get a homer. And I know you could say Josh Pearson had a homer in game one, which he did. But, I mean, Jared Jones, I think we can all objectively understand as a better home run threat. I mean, 14 homers on the season. So, send him up there hunting a fastball, try to get one swing and tie the game. That's what he's trying to do. So, um, I get it. And then you've got defensive replacements available. You put Kling in right field for, for Pearson and... That's that. So, I mean, I completely get... I don't think that's head-scratching at all. I completely understand what he's trying to do right there. Um, Arctic Tiger. And then, I mean, the other thing too, Nick, is understanding, like, they're looking at... You know, they're looking at all the splits, right? So they went with a right-handed bat instead of a left-handed bat. Um, you know, they, they know... Like that pitcher, whoever was who, I mean, I don't know who the pitcher was for, for Georgia. Like, I'm not sitting here looking at all of, you know, all of their splits and everything like that. But, um, you know, they're, they're well aware of who is on the mound and how he does against lefty versus a righty. So Pearson's a lefty. They put in Jones, who's a righty. They decided to go with a right handed bat that was a home run threat. I mean, I get it. I know what, I know exactly what he was doing. Um, you know, Jones popped out. The first pitch, that Jones saw was a fastball down Main Street. And I guarantee you that he was thinking they were going to start him off speed and the best pitch he saw the entire at bat, he didn't even swing. They actually came back on the third pitch of the AB with another fastball and he was sitting dead ready, fouled it right back into the screen. I mean, he missed it by that much. So, um, yeah, no, so I mean, it's, I, I get why I did it. It was a good decision, just didn't work out. Jackson Carney, Matt, have you discussed the ULL guy that melted down over you being on air in Lafayette? I think he even works for the school. No, I haven't. Um, somebody showed me something. It was like some guy on Twitter or something. Uh, who cares? Uh, man, I'm so fired. Like, but that just goes to show you, like, Lafayette is an LSU town. Lake Charles, LSU town. They have great universities in their cities with ULL and with McNeese. Um which have you know good fan bases and all that stuff. And I always cheer, man. I always cheer for all the Louisiana schools. But my show is primarily always going to be focused around LSU and the Saints. I mean, that's just this state, LSU and the Saints dominate the state. So that's always what my show is going to be. I'm not going to talk ULL. I'm not going to talk Meet East. I'm not going to talk. Just like, like our New Orleans affiliate is the flagship for Nichols. I'm not talking Nichols. It's just... There's an old saying in radio, play the hits. And you talk about the things that the masses want to hear about. And that's not raging Cajun sports. It's 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 why they've tried to have ULL shows on that station in the past that don't do numbers, that they can't sell. So, and not just that station, like every station the, that, that, that's in that market. Uh, Brambo, with the series win, is LSU a lock for a top eight seed? Yes, they are. LSU will get a top eight. It's just a matter of where they'll fall in the one through eight. Hey, shout out to Brock, as always, y'all. Uh, Baton Rouge Orthopedic Clinic. Need an orthopedist. The After Hours Clinic is open today. Right there on Blue Bonnet. And, of course, Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Tell you every day. Uh, you need a roof, give us a shout, Hudco. Oh, by the way, there were reports last night of marble-sized hail in Lafayette. So um, if you're in Lafayette, uh, Hudco touches every part of the state, and we have crews, boots on the ground in Lafayette. So uh, we'd love to give you a free, no-obligation roofing inspection. Just click the Hudco link right there. We can get, I mean, we could literally get to you today, maybe tomorrow, if not today, tomorrow. Let's see, Brandon Ryder, morning, Matt, who's favorite to take home the Golden Spikes? It'll be either Cruiser Skeens, I mean, that's actually really exciting that um, you know, Ben McDonald's the only LSU player ever to win the Golden Spikes, and you know, they'll have a second this year. Um, you know, Skeens has been awesome. Cruz is um, 
you know, an everyday player. So do you give to, to a pitcher, to a, a position player? Don't know, but that, it'll be one of those guys. Uh, Eric Waterrider, do you know of any sites that calculate war for college baseball? Would love to see what Skeens is on here. I don't, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, you know, Warren Nolan, maybe. Let's see. And war, by the way, is wins above replacement for those that don't know. Um, I don't know if they have that at, um, well, here's a website, Driveline Baseball, Introduction to College of War. Oh, it looks like this is from 2019. Yeah, I don't know that they have anything updated. All right. Um, Mr. W. Matt, if Georgia beats South Carolina in the tournament, do you pitch someone else and save Paul Skeens? Um, so my feeling, Mr. W., is like I would love to see Paul Skeens get a day off or a week off. I don't think a lot of people agree with me on that. That's okay. Um, I did ask Jay about that, you know, several weeks back when he was on AFR, and he said, you know, any kind of alluded to the fact that they may get into a situation where if they handle their business, you know, Skeens might be able to skip a start in the tournament. Um Maybe he pitches in Hoover, but just doesn't throw 110 pitches. I don't know, but um, yeah, I'd like to see him rest. He certainly doesn't seem any worse for the wear. I just have in my head. I asked Ben McDonald this, you know, in 1989. It had been through 156 innings, I believe. You know, I said, you know, what point did you start to feel fatigued? And he. And he was very um, direct. He was around the 120 inning mark is where he really started to feel like he was tired, had some arm soreness, and didn't recover as fast. So, so yeah, I, I kind of have that in my head when I think about Skeens. Um, so I, just to make sure that he's fresh down the stretch. But at the same time, I mean, he's got a chance to do something amazing. You know, set the strikeout record and all that stuff. So I don't know that he's going to miss a start. Nikki C, do you predict LSU win the SEC tournament? I will not, Nikki. Um, Merrick is Little back on the team next year. I think Little's going to sign. He's a junior. He'll sign. Uh, Nikki C, do you hear EA's college football video game is returning? I did hear that. Wendell Norman, Murder Giraffe, good morning. Home from Peru. Okay. Uh, Justin, okay. Now, Justin, you corrected me the other day on, uh, on, uh, Scone and T. Marquez or Marquez? I think maybe I said Quez and you said Kez, like with a K. So I'll go with Marquez, unless I got it wrong again. But just just Marquez. Transfer portal players taking up current roster spots. Um, well, you got to keep in mind, so if you're looking at the baseball roster for next year, you're going to lose Skeens, Cruz, Morgan, Thompson, Floyd, Little, um, Beloso, Dugas. That's eight right there. And, and the other thing, guys, like, keep in mind, if Jay has a chance to add transfer players and needs roster spots, he'll create the roster spots. Like, but you're going to have, like, you're going to have vacant roster spots. Um, I mean, you're going to have, a, you're going to have a bunch of guys sign. Uh, so like, oh, Merrifield's a fifth year senior. So, um, Merrifield, Dugas, Beloso, Cruz, Thompson, Napolta Jr. That'll be interesting if he's back. Floyd, Morgan, Skeens. Ackenhausen could sign, Cooper could sign, but let's just hang on to them. Edwards, I think, is probably gone, unfortunately. Money's gone, that's 10. Little's gone, that's 11. Uh, Joe Bear will likely sign as well, 12. Malazzo's interesting, he's a redshirt junior, he could, could come back, he might. 12. Um, 
Travinsky's a redshirt junior. He's probably made himself some money in signs. That's, that's 13. Uh, and Grant Taylor, I think, is a draft eligible sophomore, but he may come back. So we'll see. So, thir I mean, let's conservatively say you have 13, uh, let's say a dozen. You have a dozen roster spots. I mean, you got roster spots. You'll be able to get transfer players if you want. You'll be able to get whoever you want. Ryan Pike, baseball question, never got to ask. If the team pitches backwards against us, why don't we pitch backwards as well? Because you win the first game. Like, you win the first game. You throw Paul Skeens, you win the first game. And Ty Floyd is good enough that you should be able to go win game two with Ty Floyd. And both teams that pitched backwards against LSU, LSU was in position to win both of those games. Um, it took really weird circumstances for those teams to win it. It worked. It, good on them. It worked. But um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Uh, Armstrong just kind of reacted the same one when I called Cooper starting the first weekend. Cooper started the first weekend. You you called that correctly. You did. Um, let's see. Dave Ender, Beloso is fine at first base. We got to learn to throw it over there. Um, Dave, not every throw to first base is always going to be chest high on a rope. A college first baseman should also pick the ball. Like, you just should make those plays. Um, let's see. Randall Lawford said he was reading on Twitter about Mark Kingston. I just I just pulled up to him. Mean, that's the first thing I did. I pulled up Mark Kingston. Um, so Kendall would have it if they did. I don't think so, brother. I don't know why you would fire your coach going into the SEC tournament. Like they're going to be a regional team. That's that doesn't make a lick of sense. Uh, yeah, no. Mark Kingston did not get fired. It, that like that, it just like that wouldn't even make any sense going into postseason play. You fire your coach when I mean South Carolina might have co probably cost themselves a national seed, um, but still going to host a regional. And anyway, Antron Hemingway, good morning. What time is first pitch? No game today. Uh, they played Thursday, Friday, Saturday this weekend, so no game today. Ryan Pike, let's see. About to place a little something on LSU in the Natty. Probably that with them. Beating Florida State, I feel you need that W to get into the playoffs, plus 3,200-ish. Okay. Um, okay. Kyle Milliken, Matt, I often hear you on Chuck Oliver's show. What do you think of him and his show? Chuck's awesome. Uh, I have a ton of respect for him, the job he does. For the, those who don't know, Chuck's based out of Atlanta. He does... And he actually does two shows every day. He does the Chuck Oliver show, which is all college football all year long, two hour show. It's 10 to noon central, 11 to one Eastern. And then he takes an hour break. And then from, and then there's a three hour afternoon drive show in Atlanta. Um, on uh, Chuck and Chernoff on 680. So uh, Chuck's amazing. He's got, uh, he's very thoughtful. He's got great wit. Uh, I'm actually very envious of that because I don't feel like I have that. Uh, it's something I wish that I, that I had as a stronger uh, character trait on air. He is just, he's a very sharp witted guy, you know, one liner zingers. That's not really my strength. Um, um, yeah, Chuck's awesome. I mean, I, I'm the one who pushed to get him on our lineup in ESPN. And I don't know if y'all heard the news this week, but, um, Hannah Griff and Ott are going to, we're going to move them back 11 to one. So, um, starting on Memorial day, Charles and Jimmy go back to their 11 to one slot. It's going to be a show called, uh, live at lunch with Ott and Hanny. And, um, so we'll have OTB seven to 10 Greenberg for one hour, then live at lunch from 11 to one hunt from one to three, then AFR three to six. And then we'll move Chuck Oliver up from eight to 10 to six to eight. So, and I actually looked at a scenario where we'd put Chuck live um, 
in that slot from 10 to noon, but what we may end up doing it. Uh, we'll see. I mean, there may be options in time to get him. You know, maybe the first hour live at 10 o'clock or something like that. But yeah, I, I think Chuck's great. Um, uh, Dave Endure, not saying SC tournament is not important, but we need to rest Duga for regionals. Yeah, so Dave, someone asked me this yesterday, and I kind of disagreed because um, what's going on with Gavin isn't going to get better with a week off. So, um, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, he will need, like, an entire offseason to heal. So, um, there, I, my point is there's just no sense in resting him. Like, because it's just one week isn't going to do anything. Um, let's see. Brian Pinton, good morning. I think we're down at the end of the questions. Let me jump back over here to Facebook. Brant Roban, do you think, whoops, missed a few, my bad. Uh, Brent Roban, do you think infield needs to pace themselves a little more? Seems like errors have creeped back up and not bailing out our struggling bullpen. I mean, I do agree that whenever your pitching staff struggles, you need your defense to elevate your your pitchers to, to support them more. Um, and I don't know that there's any, like, one culprit. I mean... You know, on Thursday, Thompson dropped a pop-up on the infield. Um, yesterday, White was charged with a throwing error, but quite honestly, I mean, it's a ball below, so he should have picked it first. Um, I get it. Ball was low, it bounced. It's a throwing error. And it was scored correctly, but I also think that's one you know, play you should have made it first. Um, I'd say the same with the throwing error on Thompson yesterday. Amazing play just to get to that ball and to throw it. Uh, it's one thing if you if you airmail it, it goes into the dugout. Um, but anyway, but yes, to answer your question, yeah. Love to see him play, of course, love to see him play better defense. Bart, can a player not declare eligible for the draft and not lose their leverage? So you don't declare, Bart, um, in baseball. There are, you're just, if you, you're draft eligible um, in high school, right? And if you go to college, you have to stay three years unless if your 21st birthday is before whatever the deadline is, August 1st or whatever the deadline is. Um, so that's when you hear sometimes a draft eligible sophomore. So you don't declare in baseball. You're either draft eligible or you aren't. I mean, that's we've seen in baseball, teams will draft football players. <laughs> you, know, you can draft anybody. Uh, and then it just, can you get them to sign? But typically, you know, with your, so with your draft pool money uh, of money, like each team has a pool of money they can spend to spread out over all of their draft picks. And, excuse me. Um, typically what happens is, you know, your, your slot values are in the first 10 rounds of the draft. So, the way that it works on draft day is like a team, like if a team is going to draft a player, they'll call them and say, Hey, we're going to take you here. Would you accept 620 as a signing bonus? Whatever. Yes. Okay. Boom. That's the pick. And it's decided. So if you hear, if you hear a player drafted in the first 10 rounds, they're going to sign. I mean, it's like 99.9% .9 of players that are taken in the first 10 rounds sign. The, the one exception is when, um, was it the Mets who drafted uh, Kumar Rocker, like 10th overall? Well, they draft him 10th, 10th overall. They agree to a number. He goes through, through physical. They find something on the physical they don't like. They try to offer him a lower number. He says no. And so then he just goes and plays independent ball for a year. And then he goes back into the draft. So, yeah, so you don't declare, right? It's just when you're draft eligible, you have leverage. You can tell a team, this is the money I want or I'm going back to school. So... Uh, let's see. Kale Reynolds, some of these folks need a dose of reality this morning. Some folks here need a dose of reality every single day, Kale. Um, yeah, softball team playing to win the regional today. Definitely pulling for the, uh, the Tigers today. 
Ty Fly, good morning. Carol Messina, good morning. Daryl Darren Gagnon, good morning. You probably mentioned it before. How do you see CBK utilizing Harold Perkins this year? Um, you don't have to see. Ask me how I see it, Darren. I mean, they've, he's already said it. Harold Perkins is going to play inside linebacker. Um, he's going to be. I mean, think Devin White. That's the the role they they envision. Super athletic guy, run sideline to sideline. You know, linebacker blitzes on third downs. I mean, they've even said Matt House even said on third downs we have him working some still at the Jack linebacker position. So you could see situations on third downs where he lines up on the outside, but. I mean, he's going to be an inside backer. Brand, I'm sure Skeens is hungry to get another shot at South Carolina, which very well could happen, right? Look at the bracket real quick. Uh, let's see. So... LSU will play the winner of the Georgia-South Carolina game. Um, so if South Carolina wins that game, like LSU is not throwing Paul Skeens on wins. I, like, I will... I will I, let me put it this way. I would be fall over stunned. Stunned if LSU threw Paul Skeens on Wednesday at 9.30 a.m. I would be fall over over fall out of my chair stunned if they threw Paul Skeens on Wednesday morning at 9 30. So um mostly I'm just psyched that LSU is the first game of the day. So the game will be over by the time my show starts so I can watch the game and then talk about it on the show. So okay. So no Brent I do not think Skeens is going to pitch against South Carolina on Wednesday at 9.30 in the morning. Uh, thoughts on calls for WNBA expansion? I I don't have any thoughts on the WNBA. It's a, it's just not a great, I mean, it's been around for a quarter century and it's just not, it's just not a great league. Um, Terry, who is your one-liner sidekick? Uh, Ryan said, do you think Cruz is overthinking things and not just playing mental thing? Maybe needs to go to Muses to get some stuff to relax. <laughs> um, Ryan, I don't think so. I'll tell you the one time that I saw it was, was yesterday. Again, I've mentioned this earlier in the show, but, um, Dylan Cruz, so he struck out to lead off the game. He struck out swinging. His second strikeout, they caught him looking and Dylan Cruz is as, has as good an eye and is as patient a hitter as I've ever seen at this level. And they rung him up on a pitch that was two, two or three balls off the plate. And so the next AB, he swung at a pitch well outside the zone because they were rung him up looking uh, at a pitch like that, the previous at bat. So maybe that part is in his head, but, um, you know, I think more than anything, it just goes to show you how incredibly hard it is to hit and how incredibly amazing it is that he did what he did for hitting 500 into May. Um, but I am going to be curious, man. I'm going to call Rafe Rhymes and get him on the show tomorrow. I want to talk to Rafe about this because Dylan is now batting 429. So Rafe's single season batting average record of 431 now stands, right? So Dylan's dipped below that. So um, can he? You got you know what looked like it was going to be a foregone conclusion for a long time. Um, may actually you know stand now. <sighs> All right. <sighs> Sonny Warbington, what's up? Trey Potan, good morning. Um. White needs to spend the summer with Ron Washington. Eat your Hudco hat. Let's see. Golf South, you and Hunt both have said just getting a top eight seed is all that matters. Question though, since it's a bracket tournament, wouldn't the number two seed get an easier draw than the seven team, for example? So, um, 
In theory, yeah, and maybe there's some merit to that, but I could also point out that by and large, when you're when you're looking, um, especially when you're looking at the regional component, they do tend to try to pair teams regionally, although we have seen them send LSU to Oregon. Um, I would say by and large, what you're probably looking at more so is when you get to Omaha, you know, what do those matchups look like? But man, no matter what super regional you're in, you're going to play a good team. And, and like, I just don't think, I think the margin, like the margin isn't that different. And it really is just based on a matchup and what, what pitching matchup you're going to see. I mean, we all thought LSU had a great draw when they got to play Stony Brook. And how did that go? You know? Um, so, I mean, it like, in theory, it's, I mean, it's a good point, but I just, I just think you're, you're just playing in the margins there because by that point, everybody is really good. And it's more so about making sure that your path to Omaha goes through the box so you don't have to leave the box. I mean, we saw LSU beat a awesome Oklahoma team with Jonathan Gray, right? We saw them lose to Stony Brook in Coastal Carolina. You know? Um, no, I know what you're saying. Like, I know what you're saying in the Supers that because it's seeded. I, I get it. But again, the point being you're playing in the margins. It's just like every... All right, look, here we go. Let's just look at this. Hang on. So like, all right, so for example, right now, if they seeded like one versus 16, and I'm just looking at RPI, okay? Well, Tennessee is the number 16 RPI. Wake Forest would, in theory, be matched up with Tennessee. Is that a great draw? Not really. You know what I mean? Like, is Tennessee completely capable of beating Wake Forest? Yes, they are. With Dolander and Burns and Beam, and yes, they are. Kentucky's the two seed, not uh, two RPI. No, they're not going to be the number two national seed, but let's say Arkansas is. Arkansas is the number three RPI. So let's just say Arkansas is the number two overall national seed. There, uh, Auburn is the 15 national seed. No, Auburn's not going to be that, but Boston College could be. I would argue that Arkansas, being paired with Boston College as the two seed, has an easier draw than Wake Forest, the one seed, being matched with Tennessee, who might be the 16th. You know what I mean? Like, that's, again, like, it's just, some of it's subjective with how they, how they pair the bracket, right? But, but that, that's the point I'm making. Like, it's, a lot of it is draw. Sometimes there's upsets. Really, like, everybody's good. Most people have a good, by this point in the season, everyone's got a good Friday night guy. Like, You know what I mean? It's just like, you're going to have to play well. I'd just rather play it against a good team. I'd just rather play it at home than go on the road. Um, D, I was Bill Frank as not on the call. So Bill's son was graduating, I believe, from U High this weekend. And so uh, he stayed back. And, and uh, so Buzzy uh, Heidel made the trip. Roger Dodger, has anyone checked Cruz's exit Velo? That could be the problem. My neighbor's kid is hitting 5,000 miles off the tee. <laughs> oh, man. All right, all right, all right. I think now I think we're done, actually. It is 10-10. All right. Um... Barry Minton, good morning. Sonny Warmington, Trey Potan, Dale Broussard, who gets the pitching start at 9.30 a.m. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see what Jay elects to do, but, I mean, my guess is they'll either... See, but that's the tricky part. You could say you could pitch Coleman, but I don't think you're bringing back Coleman after throwing on Saturday on three days. Right now, there's no way they bring back Coleman. So, it's... 
you got to treat it like a midweek game. So you're either going to go Blake Money, maybe Sam Dutton. Some people mentioned Thatcher Hurd. Um, but if you want to keep Hurd in the closer role, I don't know that you start him there. So. Hi, buddy. We're just about to finish that show. Do you want to come say hi to Dad's That's show before we leave? After Dad's show, Dad's go church. Come say hi. Come see me. Come see me. Then we're going to go for our Daddy's new car to the mall. Come see. Daddy's car. Come see. Daddy's car. Daddy's car. Come see. Daddy's new car. Daddy's new car. Come say hi to Dad's show. Daddy's new car. That is Daddy's new car. Okay, you want to say hi to Dad's show? New car. New car. You want to say hi? Hi. Hi. Your feet are freezing. You've been walking on the cold floor with no socks on. Why? Huh. Look. Wait. I want to see. I want to ask you who you see. Oops. Wait, hang on. Who are you going to see? Who's about to walk? Who is that? Who, who is that? Drew. Drew. That is Drew. I love you. Did you sleep so good last night? Did you sleep good last night? Huh? After I go to the mall. After we go to the mall, we'll come back to Drew's house. And then we'll go to the park. park. Who are you going to look for at the park? Duke. Duke. Duke is a dog that lives at the park. It lives at... Some people have a home that backs up to the park. And they let Duke run around. Drew, we bring Duke treats, don't we? Do we give Duke treats? Huh? Do we give Duke treats? Huh? What does Duke say? Hey, what does Duke say? What does Duke say? <laughs> Duke barks. Okay. All right. Where are you going? Where are you going? Uh, All right, now he's gone. Where are you going? Okay, um, I think we are done. I think we are done, we are done. Okay, y'all. Thanks so much for watching as always. If you're there on YouTube, do me a solid smash that like button. Uh, subscribe up to the channel if you're new. Facebook, please like the Matt Moscone page. Share the post. As always, shout out to Brock. Remember, the After Hours Clinic is open. Brock, Rock, and Wine. Oh, 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 oh. Uh, one more thing. Brock, Rock, let me finish that up. Brock, Rock, and Wine on July 29th. And, of course, Hudco Roofing, HudcoRoofing.com. Uh, hail yesterday in Lafayette. Marble-sized hail. So, if... Um, uh, if you live in Lafayette, we'd love to give you a free, no obligation roofing inspection. Hudco Roofing, hudcoroofing.com. Uh, today, smoke them if you got them over at Beau Soule, 4 o'clock. Smokeembr.com. If you're around the Baton Rouge area, it's $100. Uh, the $100 is a donation to the, let me get the exact name of the organization. Smokeembr.com is the website, by the way. You can't get tickets at the door, but. Um, uh, so it's benefiting the Special Forces Charitable Trust. Um, so a hundred, like everything's donated. Mockler, of course, donating the, the beer. Um, uh, Don Juan donating the cigars. Beau Soleil will have food. So looking forward to being there. Four o'clock live music. It's a really good sort of relaxing uh, way to unwind, spend a Sunday uh, afternoon. So if you're looking for something to do today, uh, smoke them if you got them. Four o'clock. At Beau Soleil in Baton Rouge. I'll be there. Looking forward to maybe seeing a lot of y'all there. So, okay, y'all have a spectacular Sunday. Blessings to you all, and uh, we'll see you next time. Peace. Come on, here.